Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're gonna be looking at King Arthur from Riffle Shuffle. These decks were designed by Studio Muti out of South Africa and were released on Kickstarter. Now Riffle Shuffle is known for a wide variety of decks, uh, but a lot of them are much simpler designs, more colorful, vibrant, bold designs. Uh, but lately they've been using Kickstarter as a platform to release some much more ornate and detailed decks. And these are certainly no exception. So let's take a look at it, see how they did. All right, now the deck comes in three different versions. You have the two standard versions over here. This is the Carmine Cavalier and the Emerald Saga. These were limited to 2,500. And then slightly more limited at 1,500 is this black deck. This is the Golden Knight deck. This was a stretch goal in the campaign and the more luxury of the three. Uh, so that's the three different versions. We're gonna get a chance to take a look at all of them in turn, but we're gonna start out by looking at the Emerald Saga deck. All right, now the theme of the deck is of course King Arthur, the legendary king from Camelot. Uh, rich mythology surrounding him and lots of little details included in the deck that, uh, you know, pay homage to his legend. Uh, so starting with the tuck case, uh, it's just a matte green cardstock and it's covered with embossing and two colors of foil. You've got the gold foil and then the green foil. I love the look of the green on green. Uh, the main design element is going to be, of course, King Arthur there in the center. Highly detailed foiling going on here. Uh, have King Arthur seated atop his horse, Lamrai, and he has his spear, Rongo Miniad, in his hand. Now, a lot of people know him for his sword, Excalibur. That's, of course, his most famous weapon. But Rongo Miniad, his spear, uh, was another one that he often used. Uh, I love the flowing banner that's coming off of the spear uh, and all the details that you can see in the foiling right down to the dragons on the shield uh, the plates of armor on the horse just lots of beautiful details the background is made up of green foil and as tilted in the light you can see that it depicts a scene of the castle with the rolling hills in the background nice details and just looks great as you turn this in the light you got Riffle Shuffle Playing Card Company at the top and King Arthur, the name of the deck on the bottom. And then a frame is sort of made up of architectural columns and details all the way around, all done in gold foil. So very nice. The embossing on this one is subtle and nicely done as well. Uh, on the side, you've got Riffle Shuffle Playing Card Company with Excalibur driven down the side. And then on the other side just says King Arthur. On the bottom, you have your ad copy for Riffle Shuffle and Muti, as well as USPCC, who printed the green and red versions of the deck. And then in the top, just says King Arthur. Of course, it's covered up by that tuck seal. The back's gonna be a foiled and embossed version of the back of the cards. We'll look more at those details in a second. And then you have this elongated, glossy, uh, posted stamp style here that depicts Excalibur right down the center and then is numbered out of 2,500, 1460 out of 2,500. As you open it up, you're treated to the sight of the hilt of, uh, of Excalibur. Gives a nice look, almost like you're pulling Excalibur out of the scabbard as you open up the tuck. Nice effect. And then on the inner flaps, you get a couple of silhouetted green foil images, including uh, Excalibur on one side, uh, and this one stuck in the stone. That, of course, was how uh, King Arthur came to power when he was, as a boy, able to pull that sword out of the stone when no one else could. And then the other side, you just have a jeweled goblet. Now, one of the other highlights of this uh, of this tuck, and arguably the biggest highlight, is the interior foiling. It's a little hard to see here, uh, so I'll put a uh, image up here just so you can see how beautiful that looks uh, on the inside. But it depicts another famous scene from King Arthur's legend, and that's the Lady in the Lake. Uh, Lady in the Lake was a mysterious enchantress who played a big role in a lot of the stories. Uh, but in this scene, she, you can see her hands outstretched from the water as she presents Excalibur to King Arthur. A beautiful image on the interior of the tuck and a nice addition overall. Uh, but let's get into the cards now. And we'll start with the back design. Here it is. Uh, done in two colors, kind of that greenish color, greenish blue, and then tons of metallic copper ink. 
I love the shine of the metallic copper ink, but I'll say right off the bat, the design here is really busy. There's a lot going on. If I zoom in here, you can make out a little bit of on half of the card that scene that's depicted. It's once again, King Arthur seated atop Lamrai, this time with a lance in hand that extends to the other side of the deck. And then the back, you have an entire detailed scene complete with arches from the castle, more bits of the castle showing in the background. You have Excalibur, the sword and the stone there in the background. Just lots of details going on. Uh, and you combine that with that art style that includes that hatching to do the shading all the way through, it makes for a really busy design. It's doubled up when they reflect that design on the other side to create the two-way back design. Uh, just in my opinion, too much going on with the back design. Uh, lots of really cool artwork just too much to cram onto one little card. Uh, but finishes out with a nice thin white poker border to complete the back. Uh, so that is that. Now let's look at the extra cards that you get. Uh, first off, you get your two jokers, or jesters as they call them in this deck. Uh, so there they are. They both depict uh, an image, one in sort of greenish black and then the other one in red. Uh, of the jester seated in kind of irreverently in the king's throne and he has the king's goblet in his hand as well. Uh, kind of a cheeky uh, depiction there on the back. Uh, more of that lined detail to, to kind of affect the shading overall. Gives it a little bit again of kind of a busy feel but I like the artwork on this one still. So one red, one black joker. There are those. You also get an ad card for Riffle Shuffle, and in Riffle Shuffle fashion, they did an ad card that was kind of in keeping with the theme of the deck. I like that touch. Uh, so this one has the R on the sword in the stone, and then Arthur's crown there at the bottom. And then you get a double backer, or double backer with a color change. So there's one side, the back of the card, and on the other side, you get a preview of the red version of the card back. Now let's get into the deck and we'll start with the Ace of Spades. Here it is. Now the Ace of Spades is a card I really do like quite a bit out of this one. Uh, depicts that scene of the Lady of the Lake once again, her arms outstretched, Excalibur held high, uh, and the background's kind of a light green or a, a dark, dark green color. Uh, you've got ribbons wrapping around the spade pip there. It says King Arthur. You have his crown at the bottom and then Riffle, Shar Riffle Shuffle playing card company at the bottom. I love the shape and the motion that's created on this card. I think it's a really well done Ace of Spade. And then you have a slightly custom index and then a pretty standard pip there in the corner. Nice, easily readable. Uh, now as you get to the number cards, they feature custom pips as well. Uh, nice beautifully detailed and intricate design in there. This one on the spade pips features Excalibur with the four shields around it. Hopefully you can make that out. Definitely really tiny. Kind of reminds me of what Kevin Cantrell does like with the standards deck. If you've seen that, he does these really intricate designs inside of the spade pip. Uh, this one is even tinier. Uh, and I think for me, kind of loses a little bit of detail as you're using the deck. Uh, it's a little hard to make those out. You really have to get in close to see what they are. Uh, but the number cards, otherwise, fairly standard layout, nothing too special there. And then you get into the court cards. Now, with only one exception, I think most of these depict just fairly generic characters. I'm not sure that they're particular knights or anything like that from the tales. Uh, but going into them stylistically, uh, they feature kind of this smaller two-way court in the center. And then they're framed in the back by this line drawings of intricate details and windows from the castle. Uh, again, a lot of that line shading style all the way through. Combine that with the intricate and detailed background design. And I'll say it takes what is an otherwise nicely designed court card and definitely makes it a little bit busy. Yeah, I think there's a few things that could have been done. Maybe even just lightening, lightening the color rather than using the gold metallic inks. Maybe use a lighter color to fade the background a little bit. Maybe it would have helped to allow the court cards to stand out a little bit more. But I, as it is, I think, like a lot of the deck, they're just a little bit busy. But into the diamond cards, there's a look at the custom pit for the diamond. Hard to make out, but that's a lion in the center. So there are those. And then into your diamond court cards, I like the helmeted knight there. 
And then here's your club court cards. And then into your club number cards. There's your look at the club pips, kind of a floral design in the center there. I like the shape of the club pips with that larger bulb at the center, uh, on the center leaf. And then into the heart courts. And I mentioned there was one that I knew was a character from the stories. That, of course, is this King of Hearts. You can tell by the fact that he's lifting Excalibur out of the sword there with his right hand. This is, of course, King Arthur depicted once more. So there's your three heart courts. And then your heart um, number cards all feature a swan in the center of the pit. And going all the way through the hearts and finishing with the Ace of Hearts. Uh, so that is the deck. Uh, as far as handling, they're printed by USBCC on their B Casino stock. Uh, it handles really well. Definitely a smooth handle on these. I don't have any registration issues or anything like that like you sometimes get with USBCC. So no complaints at all about the cards themselves. Definitely slick, smooth handling cards. Uh, but that is just one of the three versions of the deck. We have a few more to take a look at. Uh, so we're going to go really quickly at the other standard version. Uh, it's similar in a lot of ways, but there are a few differences I'll call out. Uh, one of them is going to be the tuck case itself. While it's the same design all the way around, and obviously a different color, red foil instead of the green foil against that red tuck, uh, it's also a different material. Whereas this was just a uh, matte finish, this is actually that soft touch finish. If you've ever felt it before, kind of has a silky feel to it. I really like it. I love the soft touch feel. Uh, has a very matte look to it, uh, but a very distinct feel. If you've ever felt them, you would definitely know. Uh, so not sure why they changed the material on the tuck for the red version for the Carmine Cavalier, uh, but they did. Uh, otherwise, same designs all the way through. I like how the red pops out a bit more personally than the green. Uh, so red is my favorite of the two, but uh, you may have a different opinion, but otherwise pretty much the same. And then of course you get a couple of differences on the cards themselves. Uh, most notably, you're going to get that different back design. And again, I think the contrast is a little better here than on the green one. Still busy, but maybe a little better contrast in my opinion. Uh, and then pretty much the same cards. The only one's going to be very slightly different is going to be the Ace of Spades. Whereas the background here was a dark green, it's now more of a pure black on the uh, Ace of Spades for the red version. But otherwise, same number cards, same court cards, no differences at all in the rest of the deck. Uh, so that is the two uh, standard versions. There's one more to go though, and that's the Luxury Golden Knight Edition. Done in that jet black uh, card stock with the black metallic, uh, metallic foil on there. It gives a really striking look. The foil here is a little bit more of a rose gold. Uh, which is a nice addition. Love how that looks against the black. Now the tuck and cards were actually produced by a different factory. These were produced by Expert. We'll talk about why in a second, but these are not by the same uh, company as the other two, which were USPCC. Uh, I will say the embossing in this one is a little bit more slight, but definitely a much softer embossing overall. And personally, uh, while I think that the foil, you know, the card details are gonna be nicer, uh, the foiling's a little bit messier on this one than it was on the other two. So I like the foiling. I think they did a better job on these, uh, but I like the color of this one quite a bit. Still a beautiful tuck case. Rest of the details are the same. Obviously this one's numbered out of only 1500, like I said before, uh, but same details all the way through the rest of the tuck. Uh, now the cards though, there's gonna be some more significant differences. First and foremost is gonna be these card backs. Uh, beautifully done in gold foil. Hopefully you can kind of see that shine as I turn in the light. Uh, but these are cold foiled backs. And that was the reason they went with Expert. Expert definitely does a much cleaner job on, on foiling on card backs. And with that really intricate design they went with, I think they needed to use the cold foil as opposed to the hot stamping method that USBCC would have used with Metalux. Uh, so I think a good call in order to get that detail. I will say, yeah, I feel like a broken record saying it, again, that busy design really detracts from me being able to fully enjoy all the details of this back design. But I will say, you get in close and you look at those details combined with the metallic gold. It's a really nice, interesting look. and Definitely get some shine and flash 
from that back design. Uh, the cards for the most part feature the same designs, but some slightly different colors. For example, on the Jesters, uh, the, the colors now are a little bit brighter and more vibrant. So like here's the green version over here. You can see that copper metallic. Here they've used more of a gold metallic or a rose gold metallic. Uh, so a little bit of a different coloring on the Jester cards. Um, definitely see it there with the brightness on the black Jester. Uh, and then more just a slightly changed color on the metallic. So everywhere we saw metallic bronze on the other two decks, now we've got kind of a metallic gold or almost rose, rose gold on the rest of these. I'll say that that brighter metallic definitely served well on the pips uh, all the way through. Just makes a much brighter and better contrasting deck all the way through. Uh, I also think it maybe shows a little less busy as you look through the court cards. I don't know, maybe it's more of the same. Uh, but other than that, the rest of the design is the same. Now, as far as handling, these are done on their classic stock. Uh, and I'll say that, you know, given that they're a foil deck, they definitely handle well. Very, very smooth fanning, uh, which can be unusual when you get that foiling on there. Sometimes that can cause some sticking. But with that cold foiling technique and experts, uh, expertise in that area. They do a really nice job with the handling on this deck as well. Uh, so that is it. That is the last version with the Golden Knight. What do I think of the deck overall? Uh, I love the Tux. I'll say that right off the bat. I think the Tux are fantastic, look great in any display, but I struggle with the cards. I think it just went too ambitious with the designs and the details. I would have liked them to kind of just pull back a little bit, put a little less detail, let us kind of enjoy the art a little bit more cleanly. Uh, I think that really would have gone a long way. Ambitious design, a lot of talent went into it. I just think that it didn't quite come together. Uh, and for that reason, I think it's a hard deck to use. Uh, you know, I think it's one that, hey, look, if you have this in a collection, it's going to look great. It's going to kind of turn some heads, especially with those tuck cases. Uh, but if I thought about using this for gameplay or magic or cardistry, I think those cards just have too much going on with them to really shine in those areas. So for me, this really just stands out as a collector's deck more than anything, unfortunately. Uh, so nice deck. I think there's a lot to like about it. I think some people are going to love this one, especially if you keep your tuck sealed and just just like a nice tuck case, this is one you really should add to your collection. Uh, so that's it. That is the look at King Arthur from Riffle Shuffle. Hope you enjoyed. And hey, make sure you subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. And let me know what else you want to see. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you for the next one.